Guys, this is the Canon PowerShot SX70HS and this is the 740HS. You know what's so special about this camera? When you have this camera, you might not need a telephoto lens anymore. Now both camera is quite well built in general. The 70HS is solid and well spaced. Because it is a bridge camera, so it has more space for button and your handling. So this camera does fit really well in your hand. Now the 740HS is compact and a much smaller package. But bear in mind, as much as the package is smaller, it packs very similar function than the 70HS. Now both cameras does come with rubber handler to increase the handling of the cameras. Now the 70HS have a DSLR-like handling. Not a surprise in the bridge camera, but still it provides a better gripping. Now the 740HS have a rubber layer at the finger gripping area and the thumb area. Now this is rather a new approach to me. I do feel like this gives me a lot better grip compared to other normal compact cameras. Both of cameras have their button well laid out, where the SX70HS has more for the camera control at the right hand side and the top side of the camera. Now this layout actually allows you to control the camera easily with one hand. The 70HS have a similar layout, on the right side and the top side, but comes with extra zoom control and preview button next to the lens barrel. Both cameras have similar I.O. ports. You have your micro USB port, your micro HDMI port. Note that the SH70HS does also come with a remote port. The 70HS also have a mic jack. The thing is, the 70HS does not have a hot shoe, so I don't know how you're supposed to mount an external mic with this. The build interface is accessible by physically pulling it up, whereas the 740HS have a mechanical switch. Neat. Now let's talk about spec. The SX70HS have a 20.3 megapixel sensor powered by a DJ8 power processor. The zoom lens, which is the most impressive part on this camera, is a full frame equivalent of 21mm to 1365mm with a variable aperture at f3.4 to f6.5. Now, the camera does come with a 5 axis digital IS built into the camera and is capable to shoot 10 frames per second still images. Note that other than JPEG, this camera also shoot RAW. When it comes to the video department, this camera is actually capable to shoot 4K 30 frames per second video thanks to the DigiX processor. And when it comes to the Full HD department, 60 frames per second is also supported. The camera comes with a 3-inch very angle display, which allows this camera to easily become a vlog camera if you wanted it to. Now let's talk about SX740HS. It also comes with a 3.3 megapixel sensor powered by a DJ8 processor, and the lens department is slightly shorter than 170HS. Instead of a 21 to 1365mm lens, over here it's a 24mm to 960mm with variable aperture of 3.3 to 9.6. This camera still are able to shoot 10 frames per second for still image, and in the video department, it still are able to shoot the 4K 30 frames per second video and 60 frames per second video in the full HD department. In the display section, instead of a variable angle display, this camera instead opts for a flip out screen. Both camera display is not touchscreen capable, but if you need to use the touchscreen function, you can always opt for using the mobile app on your phone.
So guys, that basically covers our view on both of the camera. Both of the camera have very similar strong point. Of course, the first one is the zoom range. You can really find compact package offering such a wide zoom range. And also, the optical quality on both of the cameras is actually not half bad. To be honest, I'm quite impressed, especially for the 740HS. And finally, the build quality. Now, both of the camera might not be where the seal, but it might as well be. If Canon take one step further, I'm pretty sure they can new something and they can put in the weather seal package into this camera. But of course, there is something in future Canon might offer. And now the bad points. Now, personally, for the amount of time I've been spending with this camera, I find only one bad point, which is the ISO range. I'm actually quite surprised that the ISO range offered by both of these cameras is actually quite limiting. Now, as usual, at higher ISO, the image quality are not that usable. So I was hoping that Canon can improve this in the future. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you like what you see so far. If you'd like to see more content like this, comment down below in the comment sections. And that's all folks. Bye!